In a world that often feels chaotic and uncertain, faith stands as a beacon of hope. It's a source of strength when we face challenges, a comfort in times of sorrow, and a guidepost on our journey through life. But what does it truly mean to have faith, especially when the world seems to test our beliefs at every turn? Today, we embark on a journey to explore the profound story of faith found in John 18. This scripture offers a glimpse into the strength and resilience of Jesus in the face of adversity, reminding us that even in our darkest hours, faith can illuminate the path forward. Join us as we delve into this powerful testament of faith, love, and unwavering belief. Welcome to Lifting Words, a channel dedicated to sharing the transformative power of God's Word. We believe that the scriptures hold timeless wisdom and guidance that can uplift, inspire, and empower us all. Our mission is simple, to make these sacred words accessible to everyone, fostering spiritual growth and understanding. Today we turn our attention to John 18, a chapter filled with profound lessons about faith, courage, and the unwavering love of Jesus. This poignant narrative takes us through the events leading up to Jesus' crucifixion, revealing his humanity and divinity in equal measure. As we listen to his words and witness his actions, we'll discover profound truths that can guide us in our own lives. Before we begin, we invite you to join us in sharing the light of God's word with others. By liking this video and subscribing to our channel, you'll help us reach a wider audience, spreading the message of hope, love, and faith found in the scriptures. Lifting Words is a nonprofit endeavor. Our sole purpose is to make God's word accessible to all, fostering spiritual growth and understanding. Your support helps us amplify this message, ensuring that more people can experience the transformative power of God's love. Let's work together to spread his word and create a ripple effect of faith, kindness, and compassion in the world. Before we begin our journey into John 18, let's take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds. Let go of the worries of the day, the distractions that surround us. Breathe deeply and allow a sense of peace to settle over you. In the stillness, we open ourselves to God's presence. We acknowledge that he is here with us now, ready to speak to us through his word. We come with open hearts, eager to receive his wisdom and guidance. Let this time be a sacred pause, a moment to connect with the divine. Let's approach this reading with reverence and a willingness to listen, to learn, and to be transformed by the power of his love. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you for the gospel of John, for the story of Jesus that brings us hope and strength. As we read John 18 today, we ask for your blessing upon these words. May they speak to us in a powerful and personal way. Open our hearts and minds to understand the message of this passage. Help us to see Jesus more clearly, to feel the depth of his love for us, and to be inspired by his example. May the words of John 18 resonate deep within us bringing comfort, guidance, and a renewed sense of faith. We offer this prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As we venture into the reading of John 18, we are stepping into a narrative dense with drama and profound theological significance. This chapter marks the beginning of the passion of Jesus Christ, a series of events leading to his crucifixion and ultimate resurrection. It is here where the themes of betrayal, divine purpose, and the earthly versus spiritual kingdom come to the forefront. John 18 opens in the shadowy groves of the Kidron Valley, where Jesus, having just spent poignant moments in prayer, faces the imminent betrayal by one of his own disciples. This chapter not only narrates physical events, but also delves deep into the emotional and spiritual turmoil experienced by Jesus and his followers. The setting is somber and the mood is tense as the chapter unfolds the stark realities of the spiritual battle. As readers, we are invited not just to observe, but to feel the gravity of the moments that are about to unfold. This reading seeks to immerse us in the experience, aided by the tranquil yet poignant tones of the background music. 
As we prepare to delve deeper into the narrative, let us do so with a reflective heart, considering not only the historical and biblical significance of these events, but also their implications for our personal faith journeys. The arrest of Jesus is not just a moment of betrayal by Judas, but a profound display of Jesus' commitment to his divine mission. As Judas approaches with a band of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees, the tension is palpable. They are armed with torches, lanterns, and weapons, stark against the quiet of the night, symbolizing the darkness that seeks to overcome the light. Jesus, fully aware of what is to come, steps forward with calm authority and asks, Whom are you seeking? His question isn't one of fear, but of control over the situation. When they respond, Jesus of Nazareth, his answer, I am he, echoes the divine proclamation found in the Old Testament, signifying his divine nature and mission. This section of the chapter not only highlights the betrayal and Jesus' arrest, but also his protective love for his disciples. As he ensures their safety by negotiating with the officials, we see a leader who is selfless, even in the face of grave personal danger. This act of protection underscores the depth of Jesus' love and commitment to those he calls his own. His arrest sets the stage for the unfolding events that will further test his resolve, but also showcase his unwavering commitment to fulfill his Father's will. As we reflect on this, let us consider the ways we can embody such steadfastness and love in our own lives. Following the arrest, the scene shifts to Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples, who finds himself in the courtyard of the high priest. This setting is fraught with fear and uncertainty, and it is here that Peter faces his own spiritual trial. The cold of the night seems to seep into the narrative, mirroring the chill of fear that grips Peter as he is recognized by a servant girl. Are you not also one of this man's disciples? She asks. Peter's immediate response, I am not marks the beginning of his threefold denial, a fulfillment of Jesus' earlier prophecy. This moment is not just a personal failure for Peter, but a profound reflection on human frailty and fear. As we observe Peter's struggle, it invites us to ponder our own moments of fear and denial. How often do we, faced with the potential cost of discipleship, find ourselves faltering? Peter's denial, while tragic, is a powerful reminder of the grace that Jesus extends even to those who falter under pressure. This section challenges us to reflect on the nature of our own faith. Are we prepared to stand firm or do we find ourselves denying what we believe when confronted with adversity? Let this poignant moment in Peter's life serve as a catalyst for deeper personal reflection on loyalty and faith. As Jesus stands before Annas, the high priest, we are presented with a contrast between earthly authority and divine submission. Annas, a figure of significant religious and political power, interrogates Jesus about his disciples and his teachings. The high priest's questions are not just a quest for information, but an attempt to undermine Jesus' authority and mission. Jesus' responses are measured and insightful. He directs Annas to consider the public nature of his teachings, emphasizing transparency and consistency in his message. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple, he states, underscoring that he has nothing to hide. This interaction is not only a legal examination, but also a spiritual confrontation between the temporal and the eternal. Jesus, even in captivity, teaches us about the power of truth and the importance of standing firm in one's convictions despite opposition. As we reflect on this encounter, let us draw strength from Jesus' example. In our own lives, when faced with opposition or misunderstanding, may we too have the courage to speak truth with clarity and conviction. Let the integrity of Jesus in the face of accusations inspire us to live authentically and boldly in our faith. The story of Jesus' betrayal by Judas is a poignant reminder of the pain and confusion that betrayal inflicts. It's a story as old as time, echoing through the corridors of human history, the sting of a friend's deceit, the shattering of trust. Judas's act, driven by greed and misguided ambition, casts a long shadow over the events of this chapter. We've all experienced betrayal in some form, whether big or small. A friend's broken promise, a confidant's shared secret, 
the sharp edge of disloyalty from someone we held dear. The emotional wounds of betrayal cut deep, leaving us feeling vulnerable and alone. In the Garden of Gethsemane, under the cloak of night, betrayal unfolds. Judas, once a trusted companion, leads the authorities to Jesus, sealing his fate with a deceitful kiss. It's a chilling reminder that darkness often lurks where we least expect it, even within the circle of those we deem close. Yet, even in this act of ultimate betrayal, Jesus' response is one of remarkable composure. He doesn't lash out in anger or despair. Instead, he faces his betrayer with a calm dignity that speaks volumes about his character and his unwavering commitment to his divine purpose. When the soldiers and officials arrive to arrest Jesus, their question seems almost absurd in its simplicity. Whom are you seeking? But Jesus, in his divine wisdom, doesn't shy away from their inquiry. Instead, he responds with two simple yet profound words, I am. These words, I am, resonate with deep theological significance. They hearken back to God's self-revelation to Moses in the Old Testament, where God identifies himself as I am who I am. By using this phrase, Jesus isn't merely stating his name, he's declaring his divinity, his oneness with God the Father. In that moment, surrounded by armed men intent on his arrest, Jesus asserts his authority over the situation. He's not a helpless victim caught in the clutches of fate. He's the sovereign son of God, willingly walking the path laid out before him, a path that leads to the cross and ultimately to resurrection and victory over death. This powerful declaration of I am serves as a beacon of hope for us even in our darkest hours. It reminds us that we are not alone in our struggles. The same God who spoke through burning bushes and parted the Red Sea is with us, offering his presence, his strength, and his unwavering love. Peter, the bold and impetuous disciple, known for his unwavering enthusiasm and quick actions, finds himself crippled by fear in the courtyard of the high priest. The very man who had walked on water towards Jesus now trembles in the shadows, his heart pounding with anxiety. Just hours earlier, he had vowed to follow Jesus to prison and even to death. His words were filled with conviction and a sense of unshakable loyalty. Yet when confronted by a servant girl's accusation, his courage crumbles. The boldness that once defined him seems to vanish in an instant, and he denies even knowing Jesus. Not once, but three times, Peter distances himself from the one he had called the Messiah. Peter's denial is a stark reminder of the power of fear to paralyze even the most devout. He loved Jesus deeply, with a passion that was evident to all who knew him. But in the face of potential persecution, his fear overwhelmed his faith. The threat of suffering and death loomed large, casting a shadow over his previously steadfast heart. His fear was not just a momentary lapse, but a profound struggle that many of us can relate to. It's a battle between faith and fear a conflict that tests the very core of our beliefs. It's a struggle that resonates with our own human experience. We all face moments where fear threatens to overshadow our convictions, causing us to allow fear to dictate our actions. These moments of hesitation and doubt can lead us to make choices that we later regret, causing us to shrink back from our convictions or to deny what we know to be true. The pressure to conform or to avoid conflict can be overwhelming, leading us to compromise our values and deny the truths we hold dear. Peter's story is a mirror reflecting our own vulnerabilities and the challenges we face in standing firm. The story of Peter's denial is not meant to condemn us, but to offer us hope and encouragement. Despite his failure, Peter's journey did not end in despair, but to offer us hope and encouragement. Despite his failure, Peter went on to become a pillar of the early church. Peter went on to become a pillar of the early church, a bold proclaimer of the gospel. His transformation from a fearful denier to a courageous leader is a testament to the power of redemption. A bold proclaimer of the gospel. How did he move from such profound failure to such courageous leadership? How did he move from such profound failure to such courageous leadership? It was through the transformative power of God's grace and forgiveness. It was through the transformative power of God's grace and forgiveness. Peter's story reminds us that even in our moments of weakness, God's grace is sufficient. Peter's story reminds us that even in our moments of weakness, God's grace is sufficient. He doesn't abandon us in our failures. He doesn't abandon us in our failures, but offers us a path to redemption and restoration. 
like Peter, but offers us a path to redemption and restoration. Like Peter, we can rise from the ashes of our mistakes, strengthened by God's forgiveness. We can rise from the ashes of our mistakes, strengthened by God's forgiveness and empowered by his spirit to live lives of courage and purpose. And empowered by his spirit to live lives of courage and purpose. Peter's journey from denial to leadership is a powerful reminder that our failures do not define us. Instead, it is our response to those failures, our willingness to seek forgiveness and embrace grace that shapes our destiny. The scene shifts to a dimly lit room where Jesus stands before Annas, the former high priest, facing a barrage of questions about his teachings and his followers. Annas, a powerful figure in Jewish society, represents the religious establishment that feels threatened by Jesus's message of love, grace, and radical inclusivity. This interrogation is not a genuine quest for knowledge, but a calculated attempt to discredit Jesus and silence his influence. Annas and the other religious leaders are threatened by Jesus' growing popularity and his message that challenges their authority and their interpretation of the law. Jesus, however, remains calm and composed, responding to their questions with wisdom and clarity. He doesn't shy away from their accusations or resort to anger or defensiveness. Instead, he points them to the public nature of his ministry. He has nothing to hide, for his teachings have been proclaimed openly and consistently. This encounter highlights the stark contrast between Jesus and his accusers. While they are motivated by jealousy, pride, and a desire to protect their own power, Jesus stands firm in his commitment to truth and righteousness. He refuses to compromise his message or to back down from his mission, even when facing powerful opposition. The narrative takes us from the religious realm to the political arena as Jesus is brought before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. Pilate, a man accustomed to wielding power and authority, finds himself face to face with a different kind of king, one whose kingdom is not of this world. From the outset, there's a palpable tension between these two figures. Pilate, skeptical and pragmatic, struggles to comprehend the accusations leveled against Jesus. He sees a harmless rabbi, not a threat to Roman authority. Jesus, on the other hand, stands silent and regal, fully aware of his divine identity and purpose. Their conversation reveals a fundamental clash of worldviews. Pilate, bound by the earthly realm of politics and power, asks Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus, with a hint of irony, responds, My kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom, he explains, is spiritual, a realm of truth, love, and righteousness that transcends the boundaries of empires and earthly kingdoms. This encounter challenges us to consider the nature of true authority. Is it found in political power, military might, or social status? Or does it reside in something far greater, something that reaches beyond the confines of this world? As we conclude our reflection on John 18, we carry with us the echoes of faith, courage, and unwavering love that reverberate through this powerful narrative. We've witnessed Jesus' steadfast resolve in the face of betrayal, his unwavering commitment to truth amidst false accusations, and his profound love for his disciples, even as one betrayed him and another denied knowing him. The events of this chapter challenge us to examine our own lives, our own responses to the tests and trials that inevitably come our way. Do we stand firm in our faith, like Jesus, even when confronted with opposition and adversity? Do we allow fear to cripple our actions like Peter? Or do we cling to the hope of God's grace and forgiveness? John 18 is not just a historical account. It's a timeless story that speaks to the deepest longings of the human heart. It reminds us that even in a world often shrouded in darkness, the light of faith, hope, and love continues to shine brightly, guiding us toward the one who offers us ultimate peace and redemption. May the lessons we've gleaned from this chapter inspire us to live lives of greater courage integrity and unwavering love, reflecting the transformative power of the one who faced betrayal, endured suffering, and ultimately triumphed over death, offering us the gift of eternal life. Heavenly Father, as we draw to the close of this time spent in your word, we pause in gratitude for the strength we've drawn from the story of Jesus in John 18. The events of that night, 
though steeped in darkness, reveal the radiant light of your son's love, a love that shines even brighter amidst betrayal and despair. Thank you for the reminder that even in our own lives, when shadows fall and fear threatens to overwhelm us, your presence remains a constant source of comfort and courage. Just as you walked alongside Jesus in his hour of trial, you are with us always, offering strength for the journey, no matter how arduous the path may seem. We give thanks for the example of Jesus, who, though facing unimaginable pressure, never wavered in his commitment to your will, his love for his disciples, or his unwavering faith in your plan. May his example inspire us to face our own challenges with a similar spirit of resilience, grace, and unwavering trust in your goodness. Lord, we ask that the seeds of hope planted by the message of John 18 would take root in our hearts and blossom into lives that reflect your love and grace. Help us to remember that even in the face of betrayal, fear, and doubt, your love remains steadfast, an unyielding anchor in the storms of life. May the courage of Jesus, who stood firm in truth even when surrounded by accusers, empower us to live lives of integrity, speaking your truth with boldness and compassion, no matter the cost. Help us to be beacons of your light in a world hungry for hope, offering kindness, forgiveness, and understanding to those who have lost their way. Just as you transform Peter's denial into a testament of faith and leadership, we pray that you would work through our own weaknesses, using our failures as opportunities for growth, redemption, and a deeper dependence on your grace. May we never lose sight of your boundless capacity to forgive, heal, and make all things new. As we go forth from this time of reflection, dear God, we ask for your blessing upon our lives and the lives of all those who are seeking your truth. May the message of John 18 continue to resonate in our hearts, reminding us of your unwavering love, your promise of redemption, and the hope that comes from knowing you are always with us. May the words we have heard today take root in our souls, bearing fruit in the form of greater compassion, deeper faith, and a renewed commitment to sharing your love with the world. Help us to be your hands and feet, spreading your message of hope, healing, and reconciliation to all we encounter. And as we strive to live out our faith in a world often filled with darkness and uncertainty, may we always remember the words of Jesus. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33, NIV. In his name we pray, amen. As we come to the end of our journey through John 18, let the profound message of this chapter linger in your heart. We began in the Garden of Gethsemane, a place of quiet prayer shattered by betrayal. We witnessed the arrest of Jesus, his unjust trials, and Peter's denial, moments that reveal the raw vulnerability of human nature when confronted with fear and uncertainty. Yet even in the midst of these challenging events, we've also encountered profound truths We've seen the unwavering courage of Jesus as he stood firm in his identity and purpose, even when facing false accusations and condemnation. We've been reminded of the transformative power of God's grace, a grace that extends forgiveness and offers redemption, even in our moments of deepest failure. John 18 is not just a story of betrayal and suffering. It's a testament to the enduring power of faith, hope, and love. It reminds us that even in a world often shrouded in darkness, God's light continues to shine, offering guidance, strength, and the promise of a future filled with hope. Remember, the journey doesn't end here. By sharing this video, you have the opportunity to extend the ripple effect of God's word, touching the lives of others who may be seeking guidance, comfort, or a deeper connection with their faith. Your simple act of sharing can make a profound difference in the lives of others, sparking conversations, inspiring hope, and fostering spiritual growth. Lifting words is not about monetization. It's about making the transformative power of God's word accessible to all. By liking this video and subscribing to the channel, you're helping to amplify this message, ensuring that more people can experience the love, hope, and guidance found in Scripture. 
Together, let's create a community where God's word is shared freely, where hearts are touched, and where lives are transformed by the power of his love. Thank you for joining us on this journey through John 18. We encourage you to revisit this chapter often, allowing its message to speak to you in new and profound ways. Let the story of Jesus' arrest, trials, and ultimate victory over death inspire you to live a life of greater courage, compassion, and unwavering faith. Remember, the journey of faith is ongoing. There will be challenges and setbacks, moments of doubt and uncertainty. But through it all, God's love remains constant, offering guidance, strength, and the unwavering assurance that we are never alone. We invite you to subscribe to Lifting Words and join us again soon as we continue to explore the transformative power of God's Word together. Until then, may His peace be with you.